all right and welcome back everyone so in this video guess what we have we have once again the copper pipe all right but is there anything different this time all right oh yeah the thermal conductivity this time in this problem is actually a function of temperature and that functionality is captured by this first order taylor series expansion okay so we just have a first order polynomial as a uh, as the function the dependence of k on the temperature is just a first order polynomial that's good okay we can we can work with that that should not really be a problem for us and the now since k is no longer constant we can no longer use we cannot use cannot use the thermal resistance concept okay the thermal resistance networks by using the electrical circuits analogy that only works when you have constant conductivity so that's out of the window okay so now we have to go old school we're gonna derive the steady state temperature profile and once we have the temperature profile we can answer um, other questions like what's the rate of heat transfer what's the overall rate of heat transfer from the pipe or where does the temperature reach a minimum and what's the shape of the and is there a maximum or minimum value of temperature inside the pipe those are the questions that we want to answer and in order to answer those questions you need the temperature profile at steady state but the good thing about this problem is that everything is an SI unit so you don't have to worry about any dimensional uh, and you don't have you don't need to get caught up in the units okay good let's start off with our assumptions steady state all right so steady state that means that everything with respect to time the all the derivatives with respect to time there is no change with respect to time heat transfers only in the radial direction that means that the other components the axial and cylindrical components of heat flux are gonna be zero all right no source or sink okay again there is no uh, radioactive decay or chemical reaction in this problem so we don't have to worry about generation or consumption of heat okay so uh, when we refer to our heat conduction equation we have two options the one on the left which is a accumulation which is an accumulation equals in minus out of the flux and on the right side we have the accumulation equals the uh, k times the laplacian of temperature we can only use one we can only use one of them okay in this problem it matters the one on the right side assumes one on the right side assumes constant conductivity it assumes that the thermal conductivity is constant. Based on that, you can pull out the K outside the divergence term and just write the del double dot del dot del as a Laplacian. However, that's no longer the case. That is no longer the case. We cannot use this. Why can't we use this? K is no longer constant in our problem. All right, good. So let's focus our attention on the uh, equation on the left side. All right. So let's see what simplifications we can make. We can make. Obviously, everything is at steady state. So the left hand side, bye bye. Steady state. And the equation becomes upon some. All right. I'm just going to skip one step. And this is going to be your equation. The divergence of the heat flux the lowercase q represents my heat flux the divergence of the heat flux is equal to zero and that's just a the that's just a more uh, complicated way that's just a fancier way of saying that input minus output is equal to zero and we know that that's a very intuitive concept input minus output is equal to zero or input equals output okay this is just an in equals out or to be very to be more uh, semantically clear it is just zero equals out minus n that's what this expression is telling you all right good but uh, we can't really uh, i can't really do much with the vector notation i need uh, i need to actually solve a differential equation that's what i'm looking for so we're going to take this and use the uh, cylindrical version okay we're just going to use the cylindrical coordinates version of this equation Notice Q sub R is the heat flux in the radial direction, Q sub theta is the heat flux in the uh, theta direction, and Q sub Z is the heat flux in the, in the Z direction, the axial direction. 
and we know we have all these partial derivative terms. Do we need all of these? I mean, of course, I don't know how to how to solve partial differential equations. I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't know. But I do know that there is no heat transfer in the theta direction. Bye-bye. I know there is no heat transfer in the axial, the z direction. Bye-bye. So what I'm left with, all that I'm left with is this. An ordinary differential equation an ordinary differential equation with the heat flux in the radial direction as my dependent variable okay but i need a temperature i need a temperature profile right i need a temperature profile i need to somehow go from q to t and how am i going to do that well good thing uh, my uh, my our good old friend jean baptiste fourier did that for us the heat flux in the radial direction is just negative k times dt dr and keep in mind that k is actually a function of temperature in this problem so things are going to get slightly more things are going to get slightly uglier to be fair all right r and upon making this substitution upon making this substitution you're going to get uh there's going to be a negative sign but i'm just going to pull that out k times dt dr okay uh sorry k is a function of temperature my bad i need to emphasize that so i don't make a mistake all right now we can let's see if we can integrate this all right we have an ordinary differential equation now we just gotta integrate we have essentially done the heat transfer we've essentially solved the transport phenomena now it just becomes a ode an ordinary differential equations problem let's see if we can solve that so upon integrating once you get C1 equals R times the conductivity dt dr. And this can be rewritten as, I'm just going to flip the, uh, actually I don't need to flip the sign. This can be written as C1 over R times um, alpha plus beta t. That's the, uh, that's the functional form of the thermal conductivity. It's dependence on the temperature. All right, uh, let's uh, examine this ODE for a second. And keep in mind, C1 is our constant of integration. I'm just going to use a different, I'm just going to use a different color for that, to emphasize that. Pink is the one that I'm going to use. Good. Alpha and beta are just constants. So this is a separable ODE. This is a separable ODE. So I can use um, separation of variables to solve this problem. Again, let's uh, let's see what we can do. So on the on the on the left side, see. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm just gonna c1 over r is gonna. Sorry about that. Where's my color? There it is. Sorry. So upon separation of variables. Okay, we've separated our variables, and now we just gotta integrate. And upon integration, I hope I remember, I'm not going to make any more mistakes, C1 times natural log of the radius. And of course, there's going to be an other constant of integration, C2. And that's going to equal, all right, on the right side, let's see if we can perform the integration on the right side, alpha t plus beta t squared good all right now if you're wondering where is the uh, constant of integration due to the, uh, due to due to the uh, integration on the right side well both of the constants are just uh, combined into a single constant okay so the constant of integration from the integration with respect to r and the constant of integration with respect to t are both combined in c2 trash plus trash equals trash okay that's what one of my professors used to say Still remember that. Good. So now, okay, C1 and C2 are your unknowns that you have to solve. Two unknowns. We need two boundary conditions. Good thing we came prepared, right? Good thing we came prepared. Boundary condition one. All right, at the inner radius, the temperature equals T sub I, the inner temperature. So, so upon making substitutions, upon making substitutions, let me show you. This is just going to become a system of equations natural log ri 
plus and everything on the right side f alpha t n so now everything on the uh, everything except c1 and c2 are essentially known okay you know that those are given all right symbolically those are given symbolically let's call that i'm going to call that my equation 1 good all right and for the second one for the second boundary condition it's going to be essentially the same exact story so i'm just going to copy this give me one second i'm just going to copy this and paste it down all right good this goes okay so of course now we have a different radius and a different temperature so we, we're just gonna get rid of that all right r o and t out t o t sub o so the outer temperature okay all right and this becomes my second equation all right two equations two unknowns now you just have to uh, you have two simultaneous equations this is just algebra so you just have to solve two linear simultaneous equations which makes your life slightly easier if you have access to any uh, linear algebra software like matlab this might make stuff slight that might that might make stuff a little easier but i actually have the uh, uh what i did was i subtracted so the way i performed my algebra i subtracted equation two let me see i subtracted equation two from one yep and upon doing that i got my c1 my c1 was c1 turned out to be my c1 turned out to be alpha times t n minus t uh, uh subtracted two from actually let me write that better so one minus two the first equation subtract the second equation from that and upon doing that the following result the following result is what i got and this is actually supposed to be t sub i my bad all right t sub i all right let me just give you the solutions now okay so it's beta times T i minus T o squared, and all of that was divided. Oh, of course, there's a, a after uh, integration. Wait, oh yeah, I made a mistake. There was supposed to be a two here. My bad. There was supposed to be a two here, and uh, because like I have to integrate beta times t, so I also have to divide by the uh, new exponent. Good. All right, and all of that divided by natural log of R i over R o. So I uh, so that's my first constant of integration. My second constant of integration came out to be again. Uh, I did all of this algebra by hand. And there's a chance that I might have made some mistake along the way. So if you find one, please let me know. Alpha T out. T O, my bad. Same thing. Alpha T O plus beta over 2 T O squared minus all of this essentially. Okay. Oh, sorry. There we go. Technology. Close the uh, parentheses. Close this uh, square bracket. And natural log R O. And that's my second constant of integration. And how did I get that? And how did I get that? Well, I just plugged. I just plugged C1 into the uh, second equation. So if you plug C1 into your second equation, you're, you can just solve for, uh, by substitution, you can just solve for C2. So that's 
I mean, I've pretty much solved the problem. Now, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to plug everything back in. Okay. In this form. But, uh, essentially, if you know C1 and C2, now you can do everything. Okay. Now you can do everything. All right. So just to give you guys a quick recap, um, temperature dependent conductivity, which means we can no longer use the thermal resistance, uh, technique. Our assumption, steady state, heat transfer only in the radial direction. No sources, no sinks. We chose the heat conduction equation on the right side because we are no longer assuming constant conductivity. Okay. And this was our final equation from the heat. This was our simplified heat conduction equation, the divergence of Q, which is just an out minus N expression. And we expanded that in the cylindrical coordinates form. Again, again, we got rid of the, uh, again, we knew that Q theta was equal to zero and QZ was equal to zero because we only have heat transfer in the radial direction. So our partial differential equation was converted into an ODE. Good. So integration, 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 a lot of uh, some algebra, C1 plus C2. We use the boundary conditions, okay? So the boundary on at the inner radius and the outer radius. And then we just, uh, and then I just gave you the solution. This is uh, the solution that I got using, uh, by just doing good old algebra. So yeah, guys, um, thank you so much for watching and yeah, good luck.